good. We are back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. The Common Sense Podcast, so your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. I'm going to react to um, the five talks about Charlemagne the God's comments on Biden being the best bet for Democrats, which is very pathetic and miserable to say. Before we do that, let's give you a word from yours truly. This your boy, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. The Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Please check me out three to four days a week on my video podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. And check out the audio version on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. Peace. See you there. That was a handsome fella, and you heard him. Check me out on all those platforms. Video version goes to Rumble, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and BitChute. And the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Slacker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much, much more. All right, so let's get into it. Let's see what the gang has to say. Charlemagne, the God, giving the Democratic Party a very grim (laughs) forecast on their 2024 prospects, saying it's sad that the party cannot find anyone better than Biden. It is. I think that's more... In, indicative of what you know, Democrats aren't doing. And, and for me, I just don't, I don't I don't see the bench that the Democrats have. Like I don't, I personally don't see the per, the person that they could put up in 2024 that could like really galvanize and, and energize people. I mean, the fact that Biden is still their safest bet, I ugh, I think that's sad too. Ugh. Charlemagne also thinks Kamala Harris is a total loser adding that he does not believe the vice president is a viable candidate and would lose against some top Republicans if she is the party's nominee. And liberal outlet Slate.com thinks Joe should straight up abandon his number two. Quote, if Biden runs again, he should pick a new VP. Kamala Harris had her chance. The Democrats need something different. Okay, so I'll, I'll, let's get rid of the easy question here, Brian. Kamala. She's gone, right? A little surprising because she went and did his show. Remember, she pretended yeah. uh, to like uh, uh, who? Yeah. You know, uh, like the, Snoop the, or Dre or one of those. Yeah, yeah. And when evidently they didn't have any music out at that time. Yeah, and, she lied. Right. So she lied about that. And so he picked up on that and he, he does not for. He's also not for Pete Buttigieg. He's a smart guy, but he doesn't think the American people are ready to vote for him. So he says they're without any options. He also said about when it comes down to Trump, he says the problem with Trump is all the investigations and things around him. Yeah. He thinks it'll be a, a big showdown and that DeSantis will win. I don't know where he gets the statement when he says people are sleeping on Ron DeSantis. Everybody's talking about Ron DeSantis. No one's sleeping. Nobody's sleeping on yeah. DeSantis. You know, um, uh, and if you are, you're stupid. Charlemagne the God says he believes um, that that both Biden and Kamala would lose to Trump or DeSantis. I mean, he hasn't given up on Trump totally. So it's, it's, what's interesting is that he is like somebody in the Democratic Party, like Van Jones or Bill Maher or James Carville. Uh, they say really smart things, really wise things, and then they are wholly ignored by the Democratic Party. And, and then at the end of an election, they're like, wow, we should have really listened to those guys. Um, I think that's a very sick burn of the vice president. And I imagine that Kamala Harris will announce a full departing of all staff by Saturday and a new team by Monday. That'll right. be the seventh <laughs> rendition to see if she can try to figure it out. Again, it's like it's what he's saying. And he knows her. He's talked to her many times that she's not the one. And so now I kind of wonder if in a way the midterms will end up being a little bit of a long term problem for the Democratic Party, because now President Biden has a little bit of wind at his back. And he's thinking he's going to run again, and I bet this week, and he'll feel like, you know what? I feel pretty good. I'm 80. I just did better than I thought I would do in, in the midterms. I'm going to run again, instead of giving the Democrats a reason to say, goodbye, let's move on. Now, the Republicans get a lot of talk about being in disarray, and there is that. Yes, of course, but the mirror image is quite interesting on the Democratic side, and their bench is so weak. That is the real soft underbelly of their problems. You know, um, Harold, four congressional Democrats anonymously said that half of the Democrats in Congress would not support Biden. 
You think that's true? I don't know. I mean, it, you know, I was in Congress and people spoke on them, so they generally had some sources for doing that. Uh, they at least had some fillers out in the party. They, there's no doubt that four weeks ago there was a wide filling or growing filling amongst at least the Democrat kind of elite class that, that Biden shouldn't uh, should seriously consider not running. And I think that group thought that the midterms would turn out poorly. The midterms didn't turn out as poorly as some thought. Now, there's a, and as a result, there's some who think that maybe Vice Pre or President Biden and Vice President Harris may decide that they've had a good run here. Maybe they ought to open a door for someone else, uh, as Nancy Pelosi has done. The challenge is what's been said, that bench is not readily apparent. Um, look, I, I'm always... Let me chime in and... <laughs> So I question anybody has God in their name. It's not a God. Well, nobody's a God because nobody knows what God is. So pump the brakes. But I do like the fact that they always have this cat on here and he doesn't agree with them a lot. That's the thing. Like Republicans are willing to sit down and have, you know, civil debates and with people they disagree with. It's just liberals that aren't willing to do that. They just, they want to just name call. Um, Charlemagne's right. Democrats have no good options whatsoever. I mean, there's no name out there that's just ringing around that says, hey, this is a good, viable candidate. I can think about at least three or four Republicans besides Trump, that would be pretty good, viable candidates. Ron DeSantis is one. I definitely like um, Christy Gnomes. I like Carrie Lake. And that's the th I just named two women right there that um, if, Carrie, yeah, if Carrie Lake or Christy Gnomes was to, to run, especially Christy Gnomes, Christy Gnomes was to run, I would vote for her. Ron DeSantis was the run. I will vote for him. Um, Carrie Lake, I'm not too familiar with her, but I don't know, man. Something about her just seems like she is like a very competent politician. I definitely think um, Republicans, I mean, I'm with the Rand Paul versus Bernie. Like, I could... Let's go with Rand Paul versus Bernie. I mean, something off the wall, but Democrats, I mean, don't really got no good option besides Biden. They ain't got no choice to run it back. And changing up your vice president ain't going to make a difference. It ain't going to make, you know, are you going to replace Kamala with a, another black vice president female? I mean, you're probably going to lose a lot of female vote and black vote when you replace, if you replace Kamala, you know, it's all politics. She was only on the ticket to try to appease a specific voter. I mean, she literally called him a racist when they were debating. There's no way I could be running for politics and, a candidate calls me a racist and then and my vice president on my ticket. Pump the brakes here, man. Even if it was true, I mean, I st no. And if it's it being false, like, it's even worse. Why the hell would I allow anybody to run on my ticket that called me a racist and I'm not a racist? Like, you've you pretty defamed, you've defamed my name with complete lies and now you want to be my running mate? Nah. That's how you know it's all politics. It's nothing personal about this shit. It's all politics. Keep it moving. Well, to his opinion, and he has an interesting interesting opinion. He probably has credibility on some of this because of the things that you, I think, uh, Brian, you and you and, uh, you and Dana shared. He was uh, supportive of Vice President Harris and said that it was one of the best things that President Biden did was choosing her. Now he's being critical. I think, again, this is one of the lessons Democrats should take from this. We should not believe for any, re for any moment that we should not be serious about crime and the border. We should not believe for any moment that we should not be serious about energy and should not be, not be deluded to believe that we should not think more creatively about how to invigorate Main Street America and small business in America. Uh, and as a result, that may mean we need new personnel. 
At this moment, though, uh, as much as it may be mirrored where we have these challenges, Dana, Democrats, uh, Biden feels better about his chances than Trump, DeSantis, Haley, Scott, and we can go down the list, Pompeo. I heard something Pompeo said today about Randy Weingarten that was unbelievable to me. But look, it, it, we're going to we'll get a chance to see this thing play out. Jesse, wrap it up. Well, he does have things going for him. He just kept the Senate, and he can raise a lot of money. And he's well-liked by corporate America. You're talking about President Biden? I'm talking about President Biden. And he's an incumbent, which is hard to beat. But on the other hand, his legislative agenda is totally shot now that the Republicans have the House. They're going to crank up investigations and expose his family finances and corruption. And people have never seen that before. And he may say, you know, he matches up well against Trump, but we don't have COVID this time in 2024, and he does not match up well against Ron DeSantis. So it's whether exactly. or not Joe Biden's going to be able to campaign because of his health. And if he does campaign, how does he do that and also stay home in Delaware? You have to actually go to swing states yeah, when you're running up. a general. People don't show right. up. So is it going to be the pro-Biden voter that comes out or is it the anti-Trump? Really, that's the thing. But I wanted to discuss King Charlemagne, where the God took the name from. This guy has an amazing family tree. Are you ready? His children, Pepin the Hunchback, Charles the Younger, siblings, Carloman Gisela, parents, Pepin the Short, grandchild, Charles the Bald. Took over all of Europe, Holy Roman Empire. That's where he got it from. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, that's another thing that Jesse said. Biden is the oldest president we've ever had in office. The older you get, the less incompetent you get. The more you get Alzheimer's, memory loss. Um, they probably do need to find a younger, more viable, competent candidate but i do agree like okay he might could beat trump again but desantis well oh i don't need trump like trump probably just need might need to just put desantis on the ticket to beat him like desantis i like desantis i'm, I'm sorry i just like ron desantis he seems like he's a true politician his job is to care about the people of florida in the state of Florida, and that's what he does. He doesn't let views and policies outside of his state really dictate policies inside his state. Florida, you know, we always looked at California as like its own country, its own world because of the hippies and all that. Texas has always been considered like its own thing. Florida's got to be one of those states now, too, where it's like, it's its own country. It's its own world. You know, they're, they're trendsetters over there in Florida, you know. So, um, yeah, that was very interesting. I know Charlemagne, it's definitely, I know, I know he enjoys the fact that Fox News is taking what he has to say and you know, um, really amplifying it. I like Charlemagne the God. Um, I agree with a lot of what he says. He's from South Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. Um, we both from the Carolinas. And I don't agree with everything he says, but Charlemagne is more conservative than he set thinks. You know, he's more conservative than he really, really thinks. He just, you know, thing is, Charlemagne is a common sense guy. He's a common sense guy. He's a common knowledge, common sense guy. It's not all about book smarts and things of that nature, you know, because common sense and common knowledge will get you so further in life. It'll take you so much further in life. Once again, thank you all for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast.